Good morning, Mash the After Jog Thoughts. My name is Uyonela Mashalaba, aka the iceberg that never broke. Yesterday, guys, I went for a fresh haircut. Let me show you my good side. Okay, guys, PE wind is the worst. It is totally, totally, totally the worst. PE wind will have you jogging like a Popeye. It was so difficult jogging today. This was me jogging, not knowing whether I was going forward or backwards. I mean, guys, come on. Something must be done, guys. Like, the DA and ANC and EFF collusion here is not working. Look at how the wind is treating us. Something must be done about this. Anyway, guys, enough about the jokes. Um, again, let me remind you that these are just my own thoughts of what is happening uh, you have a right again to disagree with me you can agree with me you can comment below and then we can share our agreements and disagreements and it will just be having a conversation this has nothing to do with anything but just my opinions today we're gonna be speaking on john steenhazen i hope i pronounced his name and surname correctly um if i didn't no offense, but um, there's this is something that John Stian Hazen just can't seem to get rid of, and that is his qualifications or the non existence of his post metric qualifications that seem to be coming back all the time. You know, so South Africa has been discussing this thing, um, I think, yesterday um, since um, he was pronounced as the new DA party leader. You have one side saying that, how can this be? How can it be that the Democratic Alliance, out of all political parties, has decided to appoint someone without a post-metric qualification, replacing someone who, in fact, has two masters, two master's degrees, and you replace him with someone who has no post-metric qualification? How can that be? Uh, from my side, um, guys, I've always loved, uh, 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 maybe not always, but I've always admired John Steenhazen. For me, he has always been a better leader than Musi Maimani would have ever been. John Steenhazen, in my opinion, was meant to be the Democratic Alliance's party leader from the get-go. The man is, is just a natural leader. I mean, I'm not taking anything away from Musi Maimani. Musi Maimani is a leader in his own right in his church and i know that he had built a constituency in johannesburg already and but i just think he just felt like he was trained you know he felt like he was he was forced into this position that he had to learn this position he was not natural at this thing as i mean as far as i'm comparing him to john John Steenhazen for me was always natural, he was on point with his delivery, with his wit, you know, I, I liked him as a leader and I think he is generally the right DA parliament party leader, in my opinion, he has always been, you know, and I do not think, again, um, that public officials should necessarily be required to have post-metric or any other formal education in order to lead or to be a public representative because in my opinion as a public representative ne, it is the people that vote for you it is the people that give you their confidence to say this this particular person almost my money we have confidence that almost my money is going to lead us to this particular point whether he has a post-education qualification or not and i don't think that should actually matter because it is the people that have decided and i don't think there's any constitutional or legislative uh, uh reform or means that should become a hurdle towards that choice that the people have made you know oh john stein hazen hazen is a particular example for me of how formal education should not be a factor when it comes to politics you know i'm not saying that obviously uh for me again a combination of the two would be desirable but in this current juncture in our south african democracy it is very difficult for us to emphasize 
on qualification, particularly where we come from a political regime that intentionally excluded particular groups of people from participating in formal education. And number two, the fact that in this current juncture in South Africa, I don't think we have a qualification crisis so much because even in political party, I think there's a, a good mixture of the two, the people with non formal education and the formal education and I think if we look across board political parties I don't think we have a crisis of that much then you have to ask yourself then what is this big hoo-ha about on social media about John Steen Hazen's qualifications I think we're missing the point there I don't think this thing is about John Steen Hazen per se I think what the people are questioning is first of all the democratic alliances hypocrisy because the democratic alliances um policies or rather hardcore emphasis and obsession on formal education has been a problem the democratic alliance has went as far as calling out people in in, in full enemy municipality telling them that they were not qualified to be in particular uh, positions because they did not have a post metric qualification so it is the da's over emphasis and obsession over formal education that is being highlighted here so it's the hypocrisy that how can when you are the political party that has gone so far to highlight the importance or rather even your policy direction has framed itself to be overly emphasized on formal education how come now when one of your own is caught with their pants down that you do not use the same vigor so that is what is being in question here the fact that john stian hazen with his white privilege is able to supersede the ideology of his own political party and for me this is the critical issue here where the democratic alliance spent almost five to ten years questioning obama about his formal education when one of their own is not qualified why are we not emphasizing on higher education or rather post metric qualification when it comes to john stan hazen is it because of his white privilege because it is true that black people even white women in particular would be scrutinized if they were to be elected in a position as high as a, a party leader without any formal education they will be criticism from left to right but somehow white privilege seem to absolve white men from the scrutiny there is barriers around stan hazen not just from white people by the way black people are protecting this job again personally I think uh, John Stan Hazen is doing an exceptional job. I think John Stan Hazen is one of the best chief whips that have ever been produced by the South African National Assembly. I think John Stan Hazen will make a very good Democratic Alliance party leader. But the DA has to go further than that. You know, that is what the problem has always been for me with the Democratic Alliance that it seems to think that all the criticism that it has provided to the south african politics that they are absolved from that all the corruption that has been noted by the democratic alliances if someone in the democratic alliance had this is a field that i have if someone in the democratic alliance would be caught with their pants down in some of corruption it will be explained it will be explained the same way um, Steinhoff corruption was explained. It seems like only white privileged problems are not problems. When it comes to corruption, if it's a black person, it makes the news. When it comes to uh, someone who is not qualified, if it's a black person, it will be known. Why don't we make a big deal with white privilege corruption, with white privilege? and uh, qualification i think for me that is the problem yeah
you know that is the problem um with that said i i i am um, again like i said the day that he was elected good luck uh john you have a long difficult road ahead of you the reform of the democratic alliance is not going to be easy and this is one of the blind spots that i think you as a party leader should be looking into in terms of what has white privilege given you why are black people complaining about this you know it is a legitimate complaint and white male privilege is a real thing it is legit so whether you choose to ignore it or actually take the necessary step to address white male privilege would be up to the democratic alliance to do because unfortunately if you want to lead south africa you would need to take the necessary required steps unless the democratic alliance wants to position itself as just an opposition party for the rest of their lives then they have to acknowledge and take step to address white male privilege again my name is Uyonela Mashalaba, the, aka the iceberg that never broke. Don't forget to like, subscribe and comment below for sure.